Hello everybody. Come on in here. Get in here. I've got new glasses that make me do this all the time. Yes, this the theme song goes like this. Bum 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 bum. It's a little bit different every time. A lot of people have the same theme song every time. Not me. Um <laughs> Talk about depression. Hmm, I'm not sure why you want me to talk about that. Maybe someday. Um, for those of you in here early, before the crowd, you get to enjoy a simultaneous sip. And it goes like this. Get your beverage. Come on. Ah. Uh -uh. It's more delicious than the tears of my enemies. Um, I'm using my iPad to do my Periscope today, which is my first choice. Um, I use my phone sometimes if I'm in a different room or I just don't feel like don't feel like getting my iPad. All right, let's talk about Jim Acosta first. Um, you probably saw the news that he was asking a bunch of questions during the president's uh, press conference about his health. Uh, well, it was a press conference, and the president just said, out, and he was escorted out of the room. Soon after, he tweeted, this being Jim Acosta, I'm looking at it here, what occurred reminded me of something I would see in a different country. Certainly not at the White House. Certainly not in the U.S. Now, here's the problem with that statement. He is explicitly comparing the United States to less good countries. The same week that we found that when the president compares other countries to the United States, famously calling them shitholes, it was widely interpreted that he was talking about the people in the countries being somehow shit. Now, I don't think he said that, but if we're going to be, you know, I think he was talking about the economic situation in those countries, which is not, you know, that's not necessarily the fault of the citizens in the country. could be the fault of the government, for, for example. But and Jim Acosta says that the United States is bigger than some countries. He's not really talking about Europe, is he? He's talking about third world countries who tend not to be so white. Okay, So the very thing that the entire press was going crazy about, which is that the president would you know, deride another country, which essentially in their view, um, says that the people in the country are bad, not just the nation as it is organized. Now, while I don't agree with that, I think you can criticize a country and its government and still hold the, the, the people innocent. That would be my preference. Jim Acosta just did exactly the same thing. He just said other countries are you know, inferior in this important way. With, uh, with the United States. How is that not a comment about the people who are pretty much, you know, third world countries? So I don't think anything, is, I, I don't believe any of this is important, right? I don't think that what the president said was as bad as it's being portrayed because he was talking about the countries, not the, the poor citizens in those countries. When asked a follow-up question, and they said, you know, are you saying that you wouldn't allow anybody in from these countries? He said clearly, the president said clearly and unambiguously, yes, we want them from everywhere, right? So what the president said wasn't as bad as it was reported, as I told you it wouldn't be. And what Jim Acosta said also wasn't bad in my opinion. All I'm saying is, they're the same. <laughs> they're either both bad or they're both good. I prefer saying they're both they're both not what you think they are. 
You know, they're both just the way we talk, and some countries are doing better than other countries, and it does have more to do with the government than it has to do with the, the people. Uh, so let's give them both a break. Uh, I vote to pardon Jim Acosta from his uh, potentially racist statements, but let's just treat everybody the same and allow that some countries are doing better than other countries and it doesn't have to mean you hate the people in those countries. Now let's talk about my blog post I just posted. Uh, it's similar to things you've heard before, but I'm just going to summarize. Uh, that North Korea's in this bind where they can't really win because winning in this context would be keeping their nukes while we squeeze their economy into nothing. And that's not really winning, especially if a war is sparked in the, in the meantime. <clears throat> but they do have one path, which I explained in my blog post, to not just winning, but winning harder than any country has ever won. You know, he has the potential to win really, really hard, and it would be easy. All he would have to do is um, propose a deal or accept a deal in which um, North Korea decided to become the what I call the Switzerland of the East. Now, keep in mind, he went to school in Switzerland. Kim Jong-un did. So he kind of knows that's a, a country that operates really well and has a standard of living like he could never imagine for his own people under the current situation. But... If he were to give up his nukes, he's going to have to get something in return, unless we just crush him economically and there's no choice. So he has two choices, being crushed economically or pivot. And I think that China, Russia, U.S., and South Korea would all be pretty happy if his pivot was, hey, will the U.N. declare us a neutral zone like Switzerland, and let us build up our economy, we'll give up our nukes, you give up your offensive weapons, and we'll have a hundred-year plan for unification. It's kind of the, the best deal he could get, and it's not just the best deal he could get, it's the greatest deal any country could ever get, to have other people protect you while you build up your economy in peace. Now, I'm not sure every prior U.S. president would have agreed to that, but I'm pretty sure President Trump would, under the right situation, right? And once one president has agreed that they're neutral, future presidents will sort of be bound by that. You know, I, I can't see a future president saying, ah, I've decided you're not neutral anymore, we're going to build up our army, unless North Korea did something different, such as reinstitute their military. <laughs> So here's the thing, because we have, <laughs> uh, because we have um, an interesting situation where we have a master persuader, as I call him, President Trump, someone who really understands the mental game, the psych psychological impact of things, and at the same time Kim Jong-un seems to be a similar character. He does understand the mental game, he understands the psychology of it. The two of them can make a deal because they're operating on the same plane, probably without, without any really misunderstandings. I think everything's kind of clear at this point. Uh, so I think the two of them could make, it, make a deal and they'd both come out with Nobel Peace Prizes, as would you know, China's Xi and maybe Putin too. You know, you, you could have a four-way Nobel Peace Prize turn North Korea into Switzerland to the north, have a hundred-year plan for reunification so that the current people alive don't have to close the deal. You know, if it's a hundred years, you have all the time you need to work out the details. Lots of confidence steps along the way. The Olympics is a confidence step. <clears throat> Increasing travel would be a confidence step, etc. Now, the alternative is that North Korea loses out on the Internet. <laughs> Because North Korea can't have an internet and also expect that their current system of government and the way they live can survive. It just can't. <clears throat> Information will bring down the country eventually. So in a hundred years, 
there is no hope, no hope at all, that there's going to be a Kim regime the way we see it now. Because information can't be stopped. You know, eventually even North Korea will have information. And once they have it, that's going to be the end of the regime. Uh, so the North right now, if they started now, they could actually still be in power in 100 years. But they're going to have to figure out how to fix things, how to slowly give the give their citizens information, you know, the Internet, <coughs> access to the Internet, etc. <coughs> I'm done if we give them any money. Yeah, giving them money seems like that would be problematic. But it might be in our interest to do it if they got rid of their nukes. It would be the cheapest way we could get rid of their nukes. So I wouldn't think of it as giving them money so much as buying a successful, you know, outcome in the cheapest possible way. Do I think North Korea would agree to a nuclear freeze in the 100-year plan? No, I'm suggesting that you don't even talk about the 100-year plan until you've agreed to a Switzerland model in which they give up their nukes right away, or very soon, in return for the bigger countries giving them um, military protection for all time. All right. Did I see the Benghazi story today? I did not, nor am I terribly interested in it. Uh, North Korea allowing private farming. Yeah, I don't know the details of that, but it seems inevitable that they're going to have to do that. <laughs> Are the fake news awards tonight? Really? I haven't been paying attention. I don't know what I'll be doing tonight because I'm on vacation. So, All right, I'm going to keep it short today. That's all I need to say today. I will talk to you all sometime soon.